coral reefs are some of the most beautiful and diverse ecosystems in the aquatic world. So diverse, in fact, that while only covering less than 1% of the ocean floor, they hold almost a third of all marine life. Fortunately, however, for the past several decades, recent studies have shown that coral reefs are on a decline. According to the States of the Coral Reefs in the World Report 2020, reefs have shown a 14% loss of coral. This number may seem small, but 14% actually accounts for almost 12,000 kilometers squared. To put that in perspective, that is about the same as the diameter of our Earth. This monumentous loss in biodiversity is the direct and indirect result of pollution's effect on climate change. Good afternoon, my name is Sebastian Hill. Today I will be talking about the impact of pollution on climate change and how it affects the Great Barrier Reef. My research question is, how does the impact how does the impact of pollution on climate change affect the Great Barrier Reef? Based on the information provided by several academic journals and government authorities on coral reefs, I was able to conclude that pollution-induced climate change negatively affects the Great Barrier Reef through increased ocean temperatures and ocean acidity. This is most apparent through coral bleaching events, the growth of the invasive crown of thorns starfish, and loss of reef fish biodiversity. biodiversity. Before we can talk about the effects of pollution on climate change, we must talk about the correlation. This, is a gra this graph comes from the U.S. Global Change Research Program and is a visual representation of the correlation between the average annual global temperature and the average annual carbon dioxide concentration in parts per million. As you can see here, the global temperatures started fluctuating around the mid-1900s, but it wasn't until the 1970s that both the average global temperature and the average carbon dioxide concentration showed a continual rise. The two variables in climate change show an almost exponential growth with neither seeming like they will back down. With this in mind, we can see how pollution's impact on climate change can really affect the Great Barrier Reef through global temperatures warming up the oceans and carbon dioxide concentrations uh, making the oceans more acidic. Now that we've talked about their correlation, we can talk about their effects. For starters, rises in ocean temperature and ocean acidification cause mass events of coral bleaching. Coral is, the coral is the most abundant and subjectively most important part of coral reefs. They protect and inhabit millions of species of marine life and support healthy marine food webs. The main aspect of coral isn't the coral itself, but rather the coralline algae found on top of it. This algae undergoes photosynthesis and gives a portion of the food produced to the coral, keeping it alive and giving it its color. However, when this algae dies, the, the coral loses its color and it begins to die as well. In the past three decades, coral bleaching events have caused reef-wide declines in coral across the Great Barrier Reef, and the frequency and intensity of such bleaching is already <coughs> expected to increase as sea surface temperatures rise. In conjunction with this, ocean acidification has also been shown to reduce coral calcification, coral biodiversity, and coralline algae cover, which increases the rates at which coral bleaching happens in the Great Barrier Reef. As you can see here, this is a visual of an uh, image taken in the Great Barrier Reef. This is some nice healthy coral in December of 2014 with a nice yellow pigmentation. But around February of 2015, it leached either due to ocean acidification or uh, rises in ocean temperature. And then on August of 2015, it finally died. This is a good um, representation of the process that coral bleaching happens in the Great Barrier Reef. Secondly, the increase in ocean acidification has led to a rapid rise in the population of the invasive crown of thorns starfish. The reason why I put quotations around the word invasive is because the crown of thorns starfish isn't actually invasive, but rather has invasive tendencies like dense populations and environmentally destructive activities. Now, just like how the tiny fish across the eastern U.S. have adapted to thrive in polluted urban waters, or how fleas collected from urban ponds display higher heat tolerance to survive in new environments, the crown of storm starfish has also adapted to survive in the new acidic ocean found within the Great Barrier Reef. For context, the crown of thorn starfish are known to prey on coralline algae, and with an increase in ocean acidity, there will be an increase in the predation of said algae. This is because higher acidity levels in the ocean cause an increase in the rate at which crown of thorn starfish consumes the algae. The consumption of the algae then causes more coral bleaching events with further decline of the Great Barrier Reef. Lastly, sea surface, sea surface temperatures and ocean acidification, which cause the mass coral bleaching events and the growth of the crown of thorn starfish, have also contributed to the loss of habitat and loss of marine fish life in the Great Barrier Reef. As previously mentioned, 
while only covering less than 1% of the ocean floor, coral reef accounts for almost a third of all marine life. However, when compared to most other marine ecosystems, or reef fish when, communities, when compared to most other marine ecosystems, exhibit high levels of habitat specialization, which may make them especially vulnerable to reductions in, in habitat-providing coral species. This is proven evident by discussions in the article Climate Change Pressure on the Great Barrier Reef, which talks about the mass coral bleaching events of 2016 and 2017 that have reduced populations of coral-associated fish and invertebrates in the Great Barrier Reef. This article comes from the Queensland Government of Australia and sources its information from the Great Barrier Reef Outlook Report of 2019. This is relevant because Queensland is the province of Australia that borders the Great Barrier Reef and would be most knowledgeable in its ecological makeup. In conclusion, the conditions made by pollution's effect on climate change greatly deteriorate the Great Barrier Reef's coral system and cause severe damage to its delicate ecosystem. Research indicates that at the rate at which global warming is increasing, global temperatures will increase by, by 1.5 degrees Celsius by 2030. If this estimation comes to fruition, this could mean drastic changes for the environment or even total ecological succession. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef system in the world. It represents the diverse and resilient ecosystems that, uh, that are found in all of the coral reefs around the world. If the Great Barrier Reef were to one day fall, it can mean chaos in the marine world. And I'm excited. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions. All right, two questions for you. First up, back up. Thank you. Uh, I want you to be on camera. So, first question, how did you select the strategies that you use to gather the information for your research? Well, I've never been really good at making a thesis statement immediately, so what I decided to do was just find, um, I wanted to pick a general topic, which was the ocean, so I wanted to work in reverse to see if I, uh, so I decided to choose a study where I worked in reverse and I'd find claims about the ocean and then relate them back to some of the stimulus sources, and so, can you repeat the second part of the question, please? Well, the whole question. How did you select the strategy that you use to gather the information for your research? Yeah, so I, yeah, so I wasn't really good at finding thesis statements, so I decided to reverse it instead and then find claims on ocean and then relate that back to a stimulus source and then come up with a, narrow, a generalized argument with a narrow piece of great theory. Reading. Okay, and what advice would you have for other researchers that are considering this topic? Uh, I recommend that you do just a lot of good research, definitely use a lot of academic journals. It's very, it's a very interesting topic. I didn't know much about the Great Barrier Reef until I started, but I realized that there's actually a lot of things that affect it. So I think um, it would just be an overall good thing to research if you are into marine biology. All right, you're done.